All right, today I'm going to start a little bit different this issue here. Uh, it does pertain to my news. It does pertain to this news here. Uh, to uh, this one here, I have posted on February the 25th, 2024. Now, I am a little bit sensitive to 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 issues such as uh, Hindustan Times, let's say, suggesting that Ukraine becomes a SIA proxy. Uh, that's like 22 hours ago. <laughs> uh, really? Ukraine becomes a SIA proxy? Really? Let's see if it's anything else I can find. Uh, what we have here, okay. Okay. Um, this is a huge, huge, huge thematic subject during MK Ultra about Ukraine becoming a SIA proxy. All right, it's a very, very important topic. I'm going to leave it for some time after this video before you're going to see me giving you a comment about Ukraine. But uh, a, a subject of Ukraine becoming a SIA proxy was enormous, enormous, enormous uh, subject involved in MKUltra due to what the entire world have witnessed. To And when I googled this stuff here, Today, uh, Ukraine becomes a SIA proxy. Uh, I found here in March 2022, uh, just about when war started on Ukraine, it says on the Yahoo News that secret SIA training program in Ukraine helped Kiev. Man, uh, this secret SIA training program did not start in 2022, but I am really, really happy that you noticed, uh, well, um, my blog, for one thing, uh, it's what's interesting is that nobody, 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 nobody talked about these issues. And Hindustan Times just happens to be one of the news outlets who was extremely, extremely very much involved in it. Uh, the Asian outlets were extremely, extremely involved in it. Just as Western outlets, they they were, I mean, they they're very competitive. I'm gonna say, in a sense of news, in a sense of media. Or through, uh, here I am going to refute, just as I have already during MK Ultra, refuted them all the time because they were always try to correct me in respect to Ukraine with what you see right there, suggesting me that Ukraine became a sea, a proxy, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, unfortunately, really, guys from Hindustan Times insisted me, they're nice guys, they're really nice people. Uh, we as a people got really well along, I think. I think they liked me. But the thing is that uh, we disagreed on a political issue. The Ukraine did not become a sea of proxy, you know. Even today, now, right now, when... And that's why this video, because with what you see, the news right there, Ukraine will become a SIA proxy. You, you're, you guys with the news is seen right there. You're killing the shit out of Ukraine without even understanding what you're doing, actually. That's why, I'm, that's why I record this video. Um, hey, guys, my life in respect to Ukraine did not, in respect to nothing <laughs> Forget about Ukraine. I was delivered to Ukraine as a baby. You understand? During the Soviet Union, Ukraine was just one of the republics that, Soviet republics, that I also was delivered to. Moscow had me delivered to redistribute throughout the entire Soviet Union for its espionage purposes. You know, and... Obviously, those that allow this espionage to take place in their countries, such as in Chechnya and in uh, all these little countries in, and big countries, including Kazakhstan and uh, Ukraine, etc., they had some form of hope, something that they would be seen, heard from other side, from outside of this Iron Curtain. And so they agreed to that stuff this game 
global game because you know the Russian and American system use me on a larger scale for espionage throughout the Africa and Asia and Southern America and so on. So you know everybody had its stakes in it. You know I <laughs> I became some sort of witness for what went on without having the ability to open my mouth. And uh, somehow I did open my mouth. Managed to break through from psychiatric gag. That's when you're listed as good as, good as dead. More. Uh, I'm gonna put it this way, right? Because this is why I record this video. Let's not, let's not, let's not repeat something that eventually is gonna become a reality, and which we will at the end regret. Okay, this is not a good twist of the words. Ukraine becomes a sea proxy. Ukraine, to understand Ukraine, Ukraine became a bitch, a hooker, a slut of Central Intelligence Agency. And that's a very, very different issue from the words that you use right there, if Ukraine became a sea proxy. No. Ukraine never became a sea proxy, but with the way things are developing, uh, absolutely, that due to military assistance, uh, due to will to survive, to stay alive, rather than to be completely exterminated, Ukrainian people do have to align themselves to NATO, to United States of America, uh, Britain, Germany, West, if you like, if, you know, if you were just guys, if you were not so tough on Ukraine, that stuff would not happen. And in a context of my using the words hooker, slut, whore, I don't know what else did I use. They're not derogatory words in my terms, because I alone served Central Intelligence Agency, MI5, as a slut, as a hooker, uh, as a whore, as a, uh, you name it, you name it, I was, and that's why I see Ukraine exploited to the last bit you can do to destroy a human soul. And it's incredible that I witnessed eventually that SIA managed, together with the Western allies, destroy the soul of Ukraine to the such degree as to what we witness have taken place during what became war beginning the 2022 on Ukraine by Russia. I am surprised. I'm not surprised that stuff like this can be done to one individual, but I am shocked that something like this can actually be done to a whole nation. And Ukraine is a big nation. It's got 45 million people. It's the biggest European country, actually. Not the population-wise, largest population-wise, no. I think it's got about half of the one in Germany, I would say. But land-wise, it's the, it's the largest territory in Europe. I think it's important, really, really important to clarify that it had the war of today, the situation of the present, I don't actually mind this stuff, you know, this video where you suggest, uh, let's see. I don't mind, uh, I, I, I don't mind these issues. And by the way, you're making commercial for a totally wrong person. You're making, you're making commercial literally for what I believe is actually CIA agent. Because the goal is not Ukraine, you know. The goal is to take down entire Russia. And Russia have a big, big, big problem from within. When you have a Putin, Medvedev, suggesting about takedown of United States of America, nuking London, nuking Washington, D.C., uh, coming to take Alaska back and stuff like that, you know that you're talking about death invitation to the Russia. 
next to issues that we have seen went on, there is something much, much bigger in plan for this pedophilia more than anything related mentality. Now, for that matter, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to upgrade this post with what you see right there. I don't think we're going to see Charles for much longer. Uh, not even Joe Biden. The two conditioned me. Silence. With what started when I was nine months old. And war in Ukraine. With their disappearance. And, yeah, well, the outcome in Ukraine. I am not complying with these issues. Um, I will not comply with this stuff. This uh, Prince Andrew is joke on me, in a parenthesis, joke on me, to which I also refer to as a hooker, as a whore, as a slut as I was used, worn out, poisoned, basically destined for waste before being as if for being terminated started when i was nine months old it's more related to the pedophilia issues than any other issues and joe biden knew in advance due to war in gaza could be seen as a war criminal in fact it wasn't about military aid to Israel. It wasn't about our financial aid to the Israel. It was about American warships that sailed right in front of the Gaza, remaining Lebanon, uh, Palestine, uh, to threaten everybody in the area with uh, war, basically. Waha. Israel launched massacre of Gaza people. He knew that this thing will not end up well. And he warned me in advance that will probably disappear during this operation. Especially if they are going to pick on him and this and that and so on. And further condition me with silence or my case being wasted, etc., etc., and even war in Ukraine to take side against Ukraine and so on without him and, you know, that kind of stuff. Extremely, extremely inappropriate stuff. So your words that Ukraine became a CIA proxy and that kind of stuff do cause a lot of harm. All now I need to hear is that I became a CIA proxy. That's about the last thing I need now to hear is that I became a CIA proxy because Ukraine is completely indifferent from me. The case of Ukraine is identical to my case. Let me explain to you how the case of Ukraine is identical to my case. Uh, yeah, I'm sure that, that, that when, you need, when you need military assistance that you're going to take absolutely all the steps necessary that you will not get enemy back on your front door. And if it takes to open military bases, foreign military bases, hopefully throughout Ukraine, uh, in fact, you will agree to it. Absolutely, you will agree to it. Because this is what your foremost national sovereignty is about. Deciding about your own future. And when you're facing, I'm not going to say enemy as powerful as is Russia. Uh, but enemy as crazy as an insane as Russia acts. I'm not going to say that Russia is crazy and evil and insane. I'm just saying that there is a group of people hired by the Central Intelligence Agency, by the West, that are running Russia into the racks. And this group of people has nothing to do with the Slavic character, with the character which 
initially implied to the Russians and Ukrainians. That's why there's certain issues. My blog is the only evidence in this world to testify that war which took place on people of Ukraine has nothing to do nor with Ukrainian people nor with Russian people. Whatever happened to the Russian people, Russian people see Ukraine through the eyes of glass. It's like the way they act, it's like they would have rabbits or something like this. And it's with a reason. Yeah, when, the, when, you, when you're showing this Orthodox Church, uh, all right, this is Ukrainian, but I was thinking about Patriarch Kirill in Moscow. You know, please keep in mind that during the Soviet Union, the church was persecuted. Did not exist practically in Russia, in Ukraine. They had to comply. Uh, they, they could go there. You could go there in the church. The church the structure, everything was there still. They did have priests and so on. Uh, but you were under the radar. They did surveillance you. And the people who surveillance you, you know, this, this people who surveillance you, they didn't have nothing to do, not with Russia, not with Ukraine. They had all the reason to create a total paranoia, a total fuck up of the society, a total decay of the society, turn people against one another as much as possible using all the minorities within within the system, and not only minorities, but as you see, it came to the bloodshed between Ukrainian and Russian people. These people, quite frankly, love nothing more than paranoia inside of the system. Now, you may refer to them also as the communists, and there were. There were many Russians, Ukrainians, Polacks throughout the Eastern Europe who unfortunately dreamed about the communism but did not enforce the communism so the communism became a matter of not a, of, of, of corruption that's a really really mild word to say but the communism became a matter of convenience because if you were enrolled in a communist party you could get a better job you can get a red color uh, or white or blue color lada you could get a car six months earlier than other people in line. Uh, and, uh, you know, you didn't need special education to be boss on assembly line as long as you were enrolled into the Communist Party. It had nothing really to do. It was as hollow as anything in this world, this communism. Within the communism, it was a nationalism that started to grow. Uh, all kinds of resentments against the system, which deliberately was fucking up everybody inside of the Soviet Union, including the Russian people. So that the tensions were rising between one and they started to see each other like a dogs, like, a, like people with the rabbits, literally. Uh, till, just like in Balkans, the whole thing was growing, where the Serbia took exactly... But that was actually a very different situation. The Serbia was very, very, I think it was very different. Serbia was very, very different uh, in a sense of uh, willingness to exterminate absolutely everything and everybody inside of the Serbia, inside of this so-called Yugoslavia, to make the whole thing like a big Serbia with their apparatus who collaborated with them in Slovenia, Croatia, Bosnia, Macedonia, and so on. Uh, it was not an identical situation as the one we see in, uh, is taking place in, in Moscow. It's a different thing. There's a certain group of people in Russia uh, practically rules media, political world, 
in more than anything they rule the money where the money is they rule absolutely everything And what I stated right now goes very, very, very unlikely with Vladimir Zelensky, his statements in respect to Gaza, Israel. So my blog is really, really unique because you can read, you can watch, you can understand really what is taking place. There's no other website around the world. And this from the first hand managed to testify about or dare to speak about very very different that's why i say guys let's not go and repeat something that over the course of the time eventually will become a part of the truth and will destroy this world will become this will become even thousand times worse than what it is because israel is not going to stop at gaza israel has a plans for sinai peninsula and the israel has a plans for a dam in syria which is located in syria it's called a dam, dam of Assad. They have a plan to expand through the Syria all the way to Iraq. And even before this would take place, they have a plan to occupy Sinai Peninsula. Don't go in that direction before, you know, that so that you're not going to realize that the problem that is growing and becoming literally unstoppable will become so big that it's going to take down to the bit entire world don't go there don't go to that direction please because you know uh look at where the uh, yemen is located look where the yemen is located i think it was the last post that i dedicated and you will see the yemen is not even too far from uh, india when you start to connect these pictures with the Israel, Yemen, this issue that I mentioned here, uh, my God, by now, you should be fucking terrified. If you're not terrified by now, the stuff I talk about, the stuff I have pointed to you out, actually is taking place. You, you should be, you should be terrified. On February the 26th, I have posted one this year. Don't, don't try to turn something, uh, don't try to turn myth into, into reality because reality is going to bite your ass. When you connect this picture here, you're going to see it's so close to India all of a sudden and it's blocking India and China all together from having the capacity to communicate with the Africa and so on. That, you know, I, I'm not saying anything. I'm just saying that try to be real. Try to be realistic. Don't go the Putin way. Please, don't hurt yourself. They kill children. They kill women. In fact, 20,000 13,000 are children, 7,000 are women, and just 10,000 are men. And of those 10,000 men, God knows how many of those 10,000 men are actually what they refer to as a Hamas terrorist. Please, don't go this way because the situation is so damn serious, so damn dire, that you're going to hurt yourself beyond beliefs. If you can, together with the Chinese, you should definitely deploy military to the area of the Yemen. You definitely should create connection with the Saudi Arabia, with the people in area, and deploy your military ships to ensure that the so-called Houthis, who will take the mask of their face, and it's what Central Intelligence Agency stated, it's going to be the biggest shock for the Irani that support them. Once they take this mask off, it's going to be sent to intelligence agency face you're going to see on it. It's a catastrophic situation, tremendous misinformation, big problem. And without your presence, this area here, I think, is not going to make it. The situation is dire, serious. Use United Nations as much as possible. 
to protest against a real Holocaust that is taking place. Look, what I started here uh, is is going to make my work impossible if you will continue to imply that Ukraine is, you know, a sea a proxy. One thing is about becoming, you know, a proxy. You know, when you say a proxy, proxy is Britain from the sea. Proxy is Germany from the sea. Proxy is um, Italy is a proxy from sea. Uh, France is a proxy from sea. Uh, Sweden, Norway, Denmark, these are proxies from the sea. Canada is a proxy of the sea. And so are many other countries that became, whether you like it or not, proxies of the SIA. One of the countries that is going to become proxy of the SIA that is without absolutely any doubt is going to be Ukraine. Because just there is a there is an old saying that says the friend in need is a friend indeed, is what Kamala Harris and Andre Duda repeated to the world. I don't know in what year, 2022 or 2021 or wherever. You know, but Ukraine was not the one that created this issue. That's why I'm going to tell you today about what exactly happened with the Ukraine, with, with Ukraine. Why, what happened with Ukraine and why this kind of stuff is taking the whole thing even further. Because when you start saying, when you just start saying something, you it it really really affects world in in a sense that uh, you know as you start to repeat this kind of stuff this kind of stuff is going to become uh, more and more part of uh, a fact because you know when you're going to start to consider people like this the people have no reason anymore to as a country as a nation. To, uh, to see it their way. Please don't say this because it's not true. You know, when it comes to Ukraine, I couldn't find, for, for the hell I couldn't find this face, but it was, I seen him a lot of times on, on a Yahoo. Um, it's someone somewhat look like Mitch McConnell, but is a smaller guy, uh, and I think he was some kind of advisor or something in the U.S. government, and in the Yahoo, they had him all the time, you know, like a square face with glasses and so on. Uh, I think he was the one that there was a whole bunch of American diplomats that were in, that were visiting the Soviet Union, and I would meet them also in Ukraine, during the Soviet Union times. And because they communicated, the Soviet Union communicated with the United States of America, whether you like to admit this or not, they had a total communication with it. It was, everything was basically, when it comes to the diplomats and stuff like that, it was a different world, you know. And, you know, I suffer tremendously, tortured tremendously, hijacked to the Soviet Union for torture and suffered in Soviet Union like an animal. Torture was bestial. And, you know, this parasites that went under my skin, in my head, that infested themselves in, in every millimeter of my body, not only of my brain, to sound a little bit schizophrenic, paranoid, to give you an idea, a sense, a taste of basically the hell I have gone through when delivered to the Soviet Union because it was like a bad time when I was delivered there. Um, I became literally obsessed with idea on um, on how to break free in a world like this. I was from the so-called Yugoslavia back then, Republic of Slovenia, 
and through the Yossi Bros Tito, they found me, uh, you know, a destiny as such, and I disagreed with it. I disagreed with to see myself with in a life without absolutely any purpose, as I was thought my life will be, and so on and so forth. And so, you know, um, I was subjected to the hell also to Ukraine during the Soviet Union. Ukraine was no different than the Soviet Union. Ukraine was a bestia, was a place I would not want to go to because it was torture. But it was this American diplomats. I see it was a whole bunch of them. Say, I'm going to go one time, I'm going to catalog, and I'm going to tell you about these questions, who was there, and so on. They would... Uh, like beginning at uh, 1984 was the first time I was maybe 13 years old when I heard an issue where the British royals they brought the issue that there is a country that can actually stop the Soviet Union. Uh, when they refer to Soviet Union, they refer to as a Russia, you know, an American administration. There is a country that can stop, you know. And I said, sure, it is the country. You are the fucking country. You have the fucking weapon like Russia has. I mean, like Soviet Union has. No, 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 no. There is a country within. And what the fuck, you know? He's talking about that there is a country within that can stop, that they had a plan, basically. That there is a country within that can stop uh, a Soviet Union, fucking country within the Soviet Union that can stop the Soviet Union. You know what I mean? That has a nuclear weapons also, you know, because <laughs> the nuclear weapons in 1984, what that was in terms of freedom is that you're fucking dead if you contemplate it on war against the country with nuclear weapons. Those are the terms. There was no other weapons than nuclear weapons. For a very long time, the nuclear weapons are a doozy, like top of the line, basically. Impenetrable line of, uh, let's say, defense, yeah? Nobody had capacity to defend himself from a nuclear blast. Soviet Union was not groundbreaking, but was really insanely insane about its bad intentions in case somebody would go and try to touch their uh, reign of terror and death throughout this territory of the Soviet Union. That's why they went to this Nova Zemlya and they blasted this Tsar Bomba so the world could see uh, this madness. Uh, what we uh, go, what we can do to you and so on. Not that it would scare the world, but um, it did demonstrate that the, there are people in the system in there that are working on uh, a complete lunacy, you know, uh, more than anything, they're willing to basically blast the whole world, whatever uh, they are. They're gonna. So, um, when I was delivered to Ukraine, it took me about two years to understand what the fuck these people were talking about, because they would not take time, interesting enough, and explain me and say, <laughs> well, you know, it's Ukraine. Ukraine has its own nuclear arsenal. That's crazy because it was a Soviet Union. And I never thought about that. I never thought about this issue, you understand? I never thought about this issue, but it shows the United States of America and greater than Great Britain, believe it or not, already contemplated on disarming Ukraine 
in as early as 1984. Because what followed as next was just me, myself, becoming obsessed with idea. Mm -hmm. So this is the proof that Ukraine is not a sea proxy. I'm not going to say that it's not going to become because of the lack of choices, especially right now, during these critical times, as it became evident, due to total deliberate lack, yes, due to total deliberate lack to defend Ukraine. So it could be the global agenda that could be progressed instead under the cause of the Ukraine. You understand? I'm not going to say it's not going to become because Ukraine became a bitch. Do you understand what I'm saying? Became a CIA Central Intelligence Agency bitch. This became a hooker, a whore from a pimp which is located in a Washington, D.C. Do you understand me what I'm saying? You do understand me exactly what I'm saying. Don't say this stuff here, please. Don't say this stuff if it's, it's becoming a CIA proxy. You know, there was Chinese, there were company from India that were highly interested in investing money. As you guys know from Hindustan Times, in, in China and so on, that were interested in investing money into the Ukraine. But they did not. It was countries from all over the place, from Africa, from Southern America, from European Union, from Italy, from Germany, from Britain, from Spain, from France. They wanted to invest money in Ukraine, but they didn't. They didn't because of the what you guys all refer to as during MK Ultra, because of the war which is coming to Ukraine. You, you all have stated, after the war will end, after the war will end, we will invest into Ukraine. Uh, in other words, it was not safe to invest money into Ukraine built companies because of, well, if we go back what I stated to you, it's a very, very, very important issue because Central Intelligence Agency, CIA, British MI5, Germans, German intelligence and Italian intelligence and French intelligence and all this, they decided that Ukraine will have to give the nuclear weapons away. in a total, total, total disarmament of Ukraine. Do you understand me what, where we are going with this video? Ah, you see, it's a big difference. It's a tremendous difference when you, when you, when you put this in the right context so that we are not going to be mistaken about if, it is, if the Ukraine is becoming a sea proxy and so on. The entire world knew about that the world is war is coming to Ukraine. After 1995, absolutely 94, uh, absolutely everybody. So Ukraine became voluntarily a hooker, a bitch, a slut from the so-called Western Allies. And uh, I am the only person in this world who also is not Ukrainian and will testify you today like this on the camera so that you can actually see my face that I became obsessed with the idea in as early as in 1997 convinced that Ukraine and this is all thanks to Central Intelligence Agency. All these people, like from Donald Trump to Joe Biden, to all these people that participated in MK Ultra, but almost the guys that I was looking for that I would find on the internet, like Gingrich, uh, the whole set of people that would visit Soviet Union, that would visit Ukraine and so on, 
Uh, I'm gonna take a catalog of these people. We'll try to find a fucking catalog so that I can see your faces that you advertised on the internet, facials, so that I can tell who was the people that can witness about this stuff. Were convincing me that there is a country within the Soviet Union that can actually uh, stop uh, Russia from uh, coming back. Uh, they refer to me as Ukraine, as the country that will liberate entire Eastern Europe because of its weaponry that has, because of its nuclear arsenal that has. And really, it became... Uh, my obsession, Ukraine became my obsession because I started to see Ukraine. They literally educated me. And the problem, big, big fucking problem with this MK Ultra is that I did not know this. Not only I was drugged up, basically, you know, but eavesdropping the instruments they have used to eavesdrop on the people that got involved in it. That's how we operated this stuff. They, they put you this uh, things in you, in your ears, in your nose or hole that people cannot see that communicate with you, yet the one, the controller gets to hear what you are saying, not only see you, but also hear what you when you communicate with, with the questions that you ask that they they say to you and so on uh, this shit was all tied to the moscow the moscow was completely aware that they are in fact indoctrinating me about uh, the nuclear weapons uh, basically ukraine becoming uh in the everybody beginning the 1982 knew because everybody knew in 1982 that the Soviet Union will fail. Man, I suffered like hell uh, in 1979. It became strong indices that I will crush the Soviet Union that was trying to kill me, God in me, by more and more people throughout the Soviet Union becoming aware that what goes on within the Soviet administration is nothing other than evil that the people that are that are enforcing the soviet union down the throats uh, to people that they, they are they are totally you must be evil if you, if you torture a baby like this let's go back if you do this stuff to the babies, right? If you treat them like this, what kind of country is this? You know what I mean? So the Americans and British wanted me on the picture. They wanted this kind of stuff. And it was not only them. It was also the people in Moscow that did this stuff to make a bad impression as much as possible in the entire world so the Soviet Union would fall apart. This was the secret of disintegration of the Soviet Union, one of the biggest. And my unwillingness to give up on it, showing the, demonstrating the people, teaching the people that they have to resist no matter what and stand up and punch back uh, with whatever it takes, basically, to stay alive. There was a lot of people they delivered to the Moscow and so on, a lot of kids, all kinds of stuff went on, but none of us is as hellish as I was. I would not die for their sake, basically, despite everything that went on. And my life during MK Ultra became so public in the circles of elites, of those that witness political world of affairs, also from the background, like none other in this world. No president, nobody had any attention as big as I had, despite everything. And so, you know... Um, Russians began to remove nuclear weaponry beginning, I was even told by Ukrainian side, really, really a lot of nuclear weaponry beginning like 1986, 1987 from the Ukraine. Thanks to American Central Agency, thanks to the British MI5, 
who, however, went on to publish, like, that it was Ukrainians that gave the weaponry away because it was the weaponry that was uh, deteriorated, it was the weaponry that was unsafe to hold, to keep, uh, to, get, to maintain, and that kind of issue. So in fact, I was the one who was obsessed with the idea to retain this weaponry, nuclear weaponry, and when they told me in 19... When they started to brainwash me in 1990, all of a sudden it changed. All of a sudden, Americans that indoctrinated me, Britons that indoctrinated me, how we are going to use this weaponry, right before the Soviet Union, like in 1989 and 1990, however, the picture changed. The people who indoctrinated me about how we are going to save entire Eastern Europe with creating a little nuclear shield thanks to Ukraine, all of a sudden they, they disintegrated and they all turned against Ukraine, demanding from Ukraine for Ukraine to give up its nuclear arsenal. Do you understand me? And it was a terrible fight with me that went on for like, it never stopped. It went on like for five years with first three years, my being beaten up, getting into a physical confrontations because of this stuff, jerked up unwilling to bend, uh, and then really, thanks to Mr. Kravchuk, Ukrainsky Kravchuk, and uh, this was Leonid uh, Kravchuk, Leonid Kuchma, we have a Kuchma, Krauchuk. Krauchuk was a big one. It was not only Krauchuk. It was, it was, uh, oh, this guy here. If I could, I would uh, get my hands on this Leonid Kuchma. I would fucking choke him, motherfucker. Because this was a good Ukrainian that really, 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 really know how to fuck good. Ukraine. This is the guy who sealed the fate. You know, a Krauchuko would not give the nuclear weapons away if it was not for the Kuchmuk. Because it was the Kuchmuk that guaranteed the Krauchuk that he has nothing to worry about. So you don't fucking worry about this chain of traitors that even involved themselves directly in torture here inside the house. That fucking pervert came to fucking torture me inside of our house with his family. Treat me like a shit here to the city of the Novo Mesto, in front of the Slovenian police and all these people. Basically, after totally demilitarizing Ukraine and turning Ukraine into a bloodbath. For the following 32 years, and it was 34, it's 34 years now, but for the following 32 years, till the war broke up in 2022, Ukraine became a place, I don't know if you watch here, uh, certain parts of Ukraine, such as the area close to the Hungary, Slovakia, uh, where the British would go and force down pro through the Hungarian espionage, doing their best to disintegrate community in Bukovina, in so-called Bukovina, which Hungarians populated through a total ethnic cleansing. There never was any Hungarian people there. There were always Ukrainian people. But Hungarian people depopulated them through the Second World War II, exterminated Ukrainian people, and started to populate their own people. And then best of all is, upon independence of uh, Ukraine, upon the fall of the Soviet Union, I should say, this is the best. And it's really interesting because Ukrainian people uh, claim in, in this part of the Ukraine, the Ukrainian people are claiming that, uh, see, this is, this is basically what we have now, thanks to Google. Um, the Google have improved the ability for us to see the Google Maps.
Uh, there is no way, ladies and gentlemen, as you have noticed, I'm sure, to notice the fucking maps anymore from the Google Maps. Now you have this here. Uh, if you put map, then you get this stuff here. If you click on it, it's not going to give you a map. You see, I'm clicking on it all over. It doesn't give you the fucking map. Uh, then you can go and you can scroll down and then you can start looking for some link like this, crazy link like this. And you click on it, and then if you're lucky, it's the Google map that will open to you. Just like you see it right there. And then you get to see, basically, a map. And now, all through, it has nothing to do with my purpose right now. Uh, we can zoom into this area here. It's called Bukovina. This area here, this is Ushgorod. Yeremitri, this, Ivano Franco's, up to Ivano Franco's street, and this. The Hungarians wanted to uh, use me to brainwash here. Ukrainian people, that is the best to just uh, leave the Ukraine and join to the Hungary. It was the same thing the Hungary was using me, thanks to the British royals also in Romania. They would deliver me and start to fuck with the. Uh, with the Romanian people due to minority, which, however, did exist in Romania, Hungarian minority, but it never existed in, in, in Ukraine. The men whom uh, British royals have used for that type of purpose was, uh, his name is Sciarto. He's a Hungarian politician, Peter Sciarto. Uh, it was the one that would take me to Ukraine, it was where I would be tortured probably by his own Hungarian people, demonstrated defense and all kinds of issues over there. Uh, it was hell uh, when they video recorded the life of Hungarian, uh, Romanian, uh, excuse me, Ukrainian people in that area that... Uh, basically they work for like 80 euros per month, 100 euros per month. That means that... that that Ukraine became a bitch, a hooker, a slut, uh, a, literally a trash for its Western allies. I'm going to say not only in respect to denuclearization, but also economy wives deliberately left behind for debt, excluded from a NATO, and also disadvantaged through exclusion of uh, European Union, uh, basically a left for grabs. Do you understand me what I'm trying to say? Uh, so this is basically the Euro diplomacy, SIA diplomacy, British diplomacy that we have been witnessing to for the last what became now 34 years. Now when you say this kind of stuff here that Ukraine become a SIA proxy, you know, be careful because you are really destabilizing the world. And you're not harming SIA by doing this kind of stuff. That, trust me, the Ukrainian people that live in such a poor conditions, so disadvantaged, robbed of life, robbed of their past, robbed of their future, uh, with, a, with, with basically standing in a pool of blood up to their waist, uh, watching basically the politicians that were playing and carving their destiny, uh, it's a bloody, bloody, bloody uh, road to some kind of freedom. Whichever way you want to see this as a freedom. Nobody pay for this uh, hell. What Poland, Czech Republic, Slovakia, Hungary, Romania, Bulgaria, Croatia, Slovenia, uh, all these little Eastern European countries are taken for granted. Uh, it's actually everything for everything for everything. It is Ukraine that is paying for it all. And so when you say this kind of stuff, uh, you know, just understand that if anything, Central Intelligence says it's greater than Great Britain completely robbed, enslaved, uh, exterminated the future and the past of Ukrainian people. Just exactly in a way I have demonstrated you, 
with also what is a very, very great option that still exists on a table. If we go back to this issue here, and that's maybe even a great possibility that Ukraine could eventually end up being sold by their Western allies. Same way like you go to the meat market and you take a piece of meat, you throw it in your uh, briefcase, in your, in your uh, whatever, in your uh, bag, whatever, and you go home and that's it. It's, it's, it's nasty. It's fucking ugly. It's more related to the pedophilia. As I'm going to repeat to you this shit with my case. It started when I was nine months. It's vicious. Without absolutely, I'm not going to say fuck you mercy word. I don't like the mercy. But it's really, really merciless. As anything can possibly be in this world. So, you know, it's, it's very, very, it's highly difficult we say the, the Sia becoming Sia. You know, this is this is this is a very very serious issue that I would love you to consider and not twist your words around. Uh, be please precise about it, so that we are not going to get completely this you know uh, totally dehumanized also in this part of the world without you know. You, you, you know, like we didn't have a fucking factories here. Like we didn't have no fucking technology here before the Central Intelligence Agency came here, is what you are saying. When in fact we have absolutely everything and future in hands if it was not for the Central Intelligence Agency, for MI5, for the German intelligence and for the British and for all these so-called allies. Do you understand my words? You do understand my words? I'm sure you do understand my words. Now I have even great reason to perish as fast as possible. Because based on my views, you have not done anything other than fuck up in this world. You are a disaster, a giant disaster, a death that hunted my life in this part of the world for the world to know and remember me by something. And we are being used and abused and tortured and murdered for this type of agenda I have described here. Do you understand? We are the people who are being abused, used, and tortured. If you want to do something good, send us the weapons from India and China, because we need our countries here back in place. And I hope this video also is a strong signal and a reminder to the Pollocks. Although I have to tell you, extremely disappointing news about the Pollocks is that it was this beast from Poland that in 1988 began, in 1987, as early as 1987, 1988 began to protest against my idea about Ukraine retaining a nuclear weapons. Because the Central Intelligence Agency went on, did not waste no fucking time through the people they were using at the time to visit Soviet Union to make this thing so big that no, absolutely no party involved in this MK Ultra case could misheard or missee the issues that involved also a nuclear weapons which Ukrainian nation possessed in their hands. Do you understand me what I'm saying? I'm not here. I'm not here to be a slap bitch or something like this, but I'm also not here to take shit from anybody. When I say anybody, I mean people... I mean dirt like this, like you go to the dumpster, you go to the dumpster and you get people like this hanging around the dumpster and you give them uh, suits and ties, you wear them nicely and you say, now you're a king of Britain and you are a president of the United States of America. Thanks for watching this video, ladies and gentlemen. It's my, it's not my psychiatrist, but... Uh, he is an individual with a psychiatric license here in the city of the Novo Mesto. Lunatic would hate for me to say. Till next time. These are the words he hated more than anything. Well, at least he learned one thing. He learned to hate.